My name is Ellen Roby, and my lab studies T cell development. And up until a couple of years ago, we were exclusively looking at T cell development using mouse as a model system. And then a couple of years ago, we began to look at human T cell development and developing methods to get human embryonic stem cells to develop into human T cells in vitro. I'm Heather Melikar. I'm a postdoctoral researcher in Dr. Ellen Roby's lab. I've been a CIRM funded postdoctoral researcher for the last year and a half. Um, but I have to say that this lifting of the stem cell ban, though we are currently funded by CIRM, has a huge impact on the way we do research. First, you know, one of the simple things is that we can move out of our small stem cell room and into this larger um, lab space. Hi, my name is uh, Oli. I'm a postdoc in Dr. Alan Roby's lab and have been doing stem cell research for the past three years. Um, this band lifting has been will be having a huge impact on our research uh, from the convenience of all the tools and the material we can have access to and to the real funding that will be put on this project. So we've been really fortunate to have funding from the CIRM, from California Institute of Regenerative Medicine, and also private donations to the Berkeley Stem Cell Center. And that's enabled us to work not only with the small number of um, federally approved lines, but also other embryonic stem cell lines that have been generated from other sources more recently. And we think it's really important to be able to use other versions of embryonic stem cells, not just the approved ones, because it's quite clear that different embryonic stem cell lines have different capacity to develop. Okay, so um, O and I are standing by our lab benches in the main lab. As you can see, we have an enormous space on both sides here, and this is, of course, adjoining to all of our separate facilities, including microscope rooms, tissue culture rooms, etc. So this is our shared stem cell research facility here at UC Berkeley. Um, we've had funding from both CIRM and private donors previous to this lifting of the band. And this is our room. It has most of the basic equipment in here, but it's considerably smaller than um, the lab space that we have in the main lab. So we're thrilled to be able to continue to work in this room but expand with more people into the main lab as well. So we keep our embryonic stem cell lines in this incubator, and here we have a number, about 10 different embryonic stem cell lines growing at present, and they're all at, di at different stages of differentiation. So this is the first time we've been able to work at our benches in the main lab. It gives us a little bit extra space to spread out in some extra resources like this multi-channel pipette, which seems insignificant but saves um, quite a bit of time. So again, we're, we're happy to be out of the, the small room and into the main lab to work with our cells when they don't need to be sterile. So as of today, um, we are now able to use the MoFlo to sort our human embryonic stem cells. Before today, this machine was off limits to us. So uh, yeah, it's a real relief and a real, um, um, a real source of pleasure and relief to see that the uh, to have the ban finally be lifted. Um, I think that the the main thing is that um, although we've been able to go forward, as I said, in a limited way with these um, non-federal funds, I think for for many labs that could be doing really important research in, in this area, this been this uh, restriction on the use of federal funds has been really an insurmountable. Um, obstacles. So I, I'm really excited now that many other labs will be able to go forward with this kind of important research.